and apparently we haven't gone live. Well, now we are live. Oh, we are live now. And I see. Isn't this excitable? I don't know. Yes. I'm just um, wandering around the place, uh, putting out notifications, folks. We are live. It's just your computer. Excellent. Excellent. Well, just bear with me, please, folks, because I am just popping up notifications on Facepalm. And then we'll get into it. Please say good day down in the um, chat section. And I will move this camera a little bit. Um, say good day in the chat section. And if you do have any questions, it'd be fantastic if you could just put them in caps. Not that I'm expecting a, a runaway chat section today. So I didn't really let folks know what was going on. Um, it just makes any questions easier to spot. And also, too, if you feel inclined, if you could press that like button and uh, share this around your social medias just to help the algorithm know that people are watching and engaged, I'd really appreciate that. Even if you just give us a thumbs up in the uh, chat section as well, it lets everyone know what's going on in YouTube land. And I will stop being rude in a moment after I post this last one to our supporters page on Facebook. And then we'll get into it. Um, what do I want to do? I want to go to my Facebook page. It's my Facebook page. Sorry, folks. For some reason, Facebook is being a pain. Fancy that. Ah, uh, where are we? This has got a really bad start to this thing, Bianca. You should be telling me to do better. The algorithm won't like this. Supporters. Hello, supporters. There we go. You have a link. And I will come back to the page and see what's going on. And where are we? There we are. How's it going, folks? So, just move. And I'm just muting myself so we get no feedback. So, how's the chat going? Reluctant Gamer, how's it going? Antonio, Gornlandia, I think I've said that right. Jace, 3 p.m. and snowing in Seattle, Washington, a little bit chilly up your way. It was a little bit chilly here. We had um, 17 degrees for our first day of summer the other day, which is in Fahrenheit. Very chilly, I can tell you in a tick. If I turn it off Fahrenheit, we had we had 64.4 for our first day of summer the other day, which was a little bit chilly. Had the flannel out while I was doing a call with the uh, YouTube folks. Um, so, yeah, a bit of a slow start to summer here. We're supposed to get 38 next week, though, so that's up around 100-ish, I think. Um, Orlando, Florida, how's it going? Um, hello from New Zealand. Hello, Roseanne. Birmingham, Alabama. Echo. Miguel. Howdy. Live long and prosper yourself. Hi, Rob. I'm from the Philippines. I just want to ask how you make DIY circular rasts. Please, I'm dying to know the details. I've actually got a video for that. And I can try and find the link somewhere. Maybe if I can find one of my pages. And I can pop that in there for you. Uh, radial. I've actually got a playlist um, with that on. There's a few in there. There's a how to build as well as um, how to build as well as an explanation on what they are. Yeah, da -da -da -da. And we need to see more than 10 playlists. But yeah, they are pretty easy, mate. Uh, 200 litre barrels will give you a decent retention time in any, anywhere up to around about 1,500 litres an hour. DIY filters and ponds. Yeah, we'll share that one. Um, so you, you, 
pretty much we're looking at a retention time of around about um, six minutes or more. I actually just answered this question before I hopped online. Uh, six minutes or more for the um, retention time for the bulk of the solids to settle out. And then, yeah, underneath that, you do start to, it does slip a little bit. I think I had, in, if you see the video in there, if it's in that playlist of the small little white, I think it was about a 20 or 30 litre drum uh, filter. I had about a four minute retention time in that at times, and I was still getting loads of solids out. You'll just find the smaller fine particulate uh, just won't settle out as much. So I'm very sorry if I'm not looking at you folks as well, because my screen and camera are in different places. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps that. Where are we? Um, hello, Southeast Queensland. Hi from good old Germany. Yesterday we had our first snow. Sweet, Christine. So I take it no, no growing outside. Howdy from Oklahoma. G'day, Richard. Um, I set up a chop and flip barrel about a month ago. Onions are coming along quite well. Strawberry will go in as soon as they germinate. Nice one. So you're starting strawberries from uh, seed. That's something we tried with the white alpine strawberries a couple of years back. A number of years back, actually. It did okay. Um, we got them to germinate and then just the wrong climate. And they pretty much all just went toasty as soon as I stuck them out in the old strawberry wall. So unfortunately. So there we go. Um, I thought I saw, where are we? Oh, there we go. Placidia. Yeah, so I hope that um, link down there helps Placidia on the um, on the radial flow settler. There's a few other filters in there as well. Um, how far in are we, Bianca? We're in about seven minutes. I thought I'd just give you guys a bit of a uh, update on what's going on at the channel with the moment. Supporters would have already heard me and probably sick of me talking about this. Uh, you would have noticed if you're regular that we haven't done any videos over the last couple of weeks. Uh, just pretty much all a lot going on family-wise and with friends uh, behind the scenes, behind the scenes, scenes. And I've just been a, a little bit uh, preoccupied at doing other bits and pieces. So I figured that you know rather than just put out the same old content, me walking around the aquaponic system and, and pointing here and there, I thought I'd just um, let it slide for a couple of weeks, do a live. Uh, this week to explain what's going on and yeah just let you know that i am working on some decent content i'm working on three at the moment there is a basic walk around the aquaponic system again i just i've had a lot of people ask about the system because they haven't seen any full tours or anything like that and they want to know why i've got the little barrel in the sump and that sort of thing. So I'm working on that one, which will be a pretty easy one to knock together. I'm also uh, working on one that I started yesterday as an update video for you folks. It was um, gonna start with me harvesting the Warrigal Greens uh, or New Zealand spinach as most people around the world know it. And I realized that I hadn't actually done a growing the Warrigal Greens video. So I did the harvesting and the processing of the Warrigal Greens yesterday, filmed all that. And I think I'll put together a, um, growing a New Zealand spinach video for everyone on YouTube land and use what I filmed yesterday as part of that. Uh, so that will be coming in the next week or so, or maybe two weeks, we'll see what's going on. I'm doing a new cycling and aquaponic system, which is a lot more in depth. I'm actually um, writing out a PDF for that one for our guide. And also it'll end up in our book eventually. And then, um, I will be doing another video on that because there's a few more things that I'd like to include and I'll probably um, put up a little bit of a shorter version on YouTube just to fill in any of the gaps that I missed on the previous one. Um, so that's another video that's coming along. And Venturis, I've got the Grow Greeny and Rob's Infusionators still. While we may not use them in our system, I do sell a lot of Venturis for different reasons. Uh, Rob's fits a particular niche. Uh, which I think is fantastic and I will use in the future. Um, and the Grow Greeny is just a uh, plug and play screw in jobby that goes in various places in your aquaponic system. And I've got a water tank I set up through the week and some plumbing ready uh, to shoot some underwater video of that, uh, just to show you how those guys work. And um, along with the one that I already sell, just a bit of a comparison between the three. And um, that one's coming along. And while I was writing the script for that one, I 
realized I haven't actually done a video on oxygen in aquaponics and where it's needed because it is needed in more than um, one location, that being the fish tank. It's also needed by the bacteria and the plants. Uh, so I thought I'd do a video on that because it's not something I've really seen uh, online, uh, going into it a little bit deeper other than mentioning that you need it. So there is a lot going on behind the scenes and I'm writing articles for all that as well. Um, some will end up on the website, some will end up, like I said, in the guide and in the future books. So very busy, but just very hard to get the, all the ducks lined up so I can do all that stuff and then also do videos for YouTube because YouTube videos tend to be very time consuming. And if I do one of the, the in-depth ones um, with the, the graphics that everyone seems to love, it can take me anywhere up to three or four days to film and then edit them and then film all the bits that I forgot. Uh, so that's why there hasn't been any videos. It's just easy for me to walk around the system. And I've been told by people that they're getting bored of that sort of thing. So yeah, the video frequency may be knocked down a little bit, but I'm happy, more than happy to do our live streams every week. Might actually do a poll in our community section asking folks if they would like me to do more live streams. The anchor's looking my way. Well, thought there might have been something. Really typing. Um, so time for me to take a breath and a sip of coffee. So, any questions, Bianca? Or notable comments? Samuel, nice one. Samuel duplicated the five gallon radial flow and did it with a 55 bar, um, yeah, barrel and it works a charm. That's pretty much all what I'd recommend, like 200 litres minimum. Uh, for most backyard, like 260, 260 to um, probably like um, 100 gallon um, systems, which is like 100,000 uh, litres to about a 1,400 litre system. Yes, Bianca? Oh, actually, in Iowa. Iowa. Well, Bianca and I were talking about this this week. Um, potential, potential um, places to live or visit long term. Maybe we should visit America before we choose to buy there. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, something I'd love to do is go to America. I've had loads of folks um, um, offer to put us up if we wanted to do workshops and that sort of thing over in the States. It's just um, one of those things with visas. I don't even have a passport. Furthest overseas I've been, I know it's corny, but Morton Island off Brisbane. Um, so yeah, I haven't really traveled overseas. So we'd have to organize passports and visas and all that sort of thing. Not that that's a drama. Uh, Discord. Um, it's it's one of those things. Uh, I did a creator uh, course with YouTube and um, Jelly Smack um, over the last four or so weeks. And one of the things I've realized is I'm just too far stretched out. I've got a couple of different places on Facebook I've got commitments to. I've got content for YouTube. I've got supporters on three different platforms. Um, I've got to create content. I've got to try and run a store. Also do the dishes, clean the clothes, clean Bianca's the full-time worker here. I'm the homebody. And um, yeah, I'm just too far stretched out to start up another one. I do know a lot of folks uh, use Discord and they have fairly active communities, but it's just something at this point in time, until I can sort out what's going on um, and try and streamline my things, I don't think I'll be starting up a Discord. I was asked by people to start up a Patreon account, even though I do have other membership sites, you know, lazy buggers, uh, couldn't even be bothered to sign up over there. Uh, not that I want their subscriptions, it's just a fair bit of work goes into setting something like that up and then just have it sit there and do nothing. So I'm thinking about shutting down the Patreon one very soon. I've actually got a bit of news with that. Um, the people who host our guide Retrieve, they have an extremely interactive um, community. They call it Rob's aquaponics and backyard family. It sounds a little bit cultish. So we're gonna to have to work on the name, um, but they've got a really good interactive um, system over there where we can actually hold our um, 
YouTube live via there through Zoom. Um, we can have live hangouts on the platform itself. People can upload a lot more, um, a lot more easily than they easily easier than they can on Facebook. So I'm actually thinking about moving all my community over to Retrieve. It means I don't have to worry about other platforms. I have one place that has my guide, then I can offer packages. You can buy the guide and get free access to the community as well or certain packages um, for a limited time or we haven't even worked that out yet. Um, so people can actually post threads dedicated just to their system almost like a forum and people can come on and help them out. So something Bianca and I really have to look into a little bit more, test the functionality of it, make sure it's going to work. And then um, what's he doing? Jack, off the table. Been caught on the coffee, ta coffee table. Um, and once we suss all that out, it would be good um, to get a couple of current members just to have a bit of a gander at that sort of community and see what they think about it first. So it's something we've got going. But yeah, um, the, the the Discord just for now, um, sorry. I do know that um, uh, if you're after a good aquaponic one, I, I haven't visited it, sorry, recently. Um, some of my supporters I know who may be on here today are members on there. Um, Rob from Bigelow Brook Farm, he has a Discord page. And I did see when I was keeping tabs on it, people were getting in there and asking questions and that, that sort of thing. So that might be up your alley, mate. So, yeah, there you go. Oh, Iowa, I saw something about winter. Corn, lots of corn. Oh, I could handle the Amish. Um, yeah, I've, places of interest. Um, Frank, when he was um, on here a fair bit, uh, he was um, trying, to, trying to sell us into um, Florida. Uh, so northern or mid mid Florida to the north. I've had folks suggest that Texas might be more up our alley. Um, so as long as we're not near Hurricane Alley, I'm happy with that. Yeah, down down on the um, uh, on the Gulf. Yeah, it's a little bit more like us. Um, so yeah, nice nice places to visit. I think. Also, a lot of people in the Pacific Northwest have um, uh, supported us and have um, told us about their islands and places up there. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Can you guys hear Bianca okay? Just let us know if you can't. I don't know how this mic thing's working. Um, that sounds cool. So, basically, building. Um, building an, a, a portable system or having a cart to deliver the produce. That'd be cool. I have seen, I have seen um, a few people, I have seen a few people do um, the, the portable solar systems on, pardon me, trailers. So they um, take them out as a bit of a dual, I don't know how, if it's still up and running. I remember seeing photos in Facebook groups and on uh, forums, but they do like a solar get up on the back of the trailer and then rock up to a local fair who's in the States or market. And then they'd show the, the aquaponic system as well as be up for harvest directly and sell to the public. So um, I thought that was a fantastic idea. Yes, I did. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, Samuel. No, Samuel did the five gallon. No, it's a good yeah. one. Yeah, it's basically the five gallon is um, how we built our 50 gallon radial flow settler. And I saw Jonathan. Yep, Jonathan's question. I have a hydroponic question. What are the most nutrients in a three part? I don't really know a lot about um, that. Sorry, mate. Um, it's been decades since I've had a really good look at um, hydroponics. Um, yeah, Hucho, um, have a look at Hucho's channel. Um, he, he's got a few videos on nutrient solutions and I'm fairly sure he includes um, overseas if you're not in Oz, but if you are in Oz, there's a pro with a stick. Uh, if you are in Oz, sorry. Um, if you are in Oz, uh, I think he's got suggestions for a couple as well as the extra additives to throw in other than the A and the B. I think it's still an A and B. He's a diamond T, which 
I'm not too sure, can't remember, um, but he might be able to help you out. I have used a couple, but I've used the Australian Bloom Organic uh, Grow, and I've used another one that I've got um, recently, which is another organic preparation, uh, but I just haven't had time to set up another um, hydro system, actually space as well. So yeah, that's something that um, I'm yet to play around with again. Hello, Mr. Sam. How are you, Mr. Sam? Sam is from 100 Gardens. He sets up um, aquaponics bits and bobs all around the, not all around the states, around most states. I think, yeah, I don't think he's got a system in every state yet, uh, but in correction facilities and schools. I don't know if it's 100 Gardens on TikTok and the other platforms. I think it is on Facebook. So check him out. Feel free to um, pop your links down in the chat if you want, Sam. A little bit of a spruik. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Um, you are pointing? Jonathan. Oh, I've been making my own and wondering if I'm onto something special. Oh, cool, mate. So an organic based one or are you using, uh, mixing up your own elements? Um, so your own um, bits and pieces. So I know that um, they do, a lot of the guys here will end up adding a cow mag after they do their, their basic formula. Um, but then again, most of them are just growing leafy greens as well, which um, helps out. They can't hear you that well. Okay, so Bianca's going to have to yell. Oh, we could move this in closer. Uh, uh, how's that? Keep yelling. Keep yelling. Okay. Um, I know there's some pretty massive ones around the world um, now compared with the largest one that I knew of before, which was in the UAE. Um, pretty much all the sky's the limit. It, it just uh, depends on stocking, stocking levels mainly. Um, still can't hear you. Bianca has um, just said, <laughs> I shall be your translator. Where are we? Uh, the biggest aquaponics, Antonio, the biggest aquaponic system that it can has been built. Yeah, mate, I'm, I'm, haven't kept up with the trades papers a lot recently um but yeah there's there are some fairly massive ones out there even in the us there's some huge ones uh the uae was the largest one on you of previously and we're going back a number of years now so it's got to be surpassed um but yeah um there are some huge ones out there uh, as for commercial viability I'm, yeah, I've, I've seen articles which say that it potentially isn't, especially with uh, the prices of everything going up, um, uh, mainly because of the, the ability to lose your produce um, or your nutrient supply very quickly if you have a failure with the fish side of things. But I mean, things have come a long way with backups and redundancies and that sort of, you know, that sort of thing. There you go. Superior, where is it? Superior Fresh, three acres, well, biggest. And when was this written? Oh, that was in 2018. And yeah. that's the three acre glass greenhouse. And they're doing 1.8 million pounds of leafy greens every year. But this was back in 2018. And I'm sure there's more by now. Are they the salmon folks? I don't think they are. No. No. Anyway, yeah, there are some huge ones out there. I'm just going to move that back a bit. That looks weird there. There we go. So just cuts, just cuts her from frame. Yeah. Wisconsin, there you go. They're in Wisconsin. Um, what do, here we go, Samuel, what do you think about using carp on hydroponic system and what size do you think? So using carp in aquaponics and using, um, Carp work fine in aquaponics. That's basically what koi and goldfish are. There's folks, uh, there's a guy I was following in um, Hungary, Wallapinis. I don't know if you know what they are. They're an in-ground um, greenhouse. So you've got the thermal mass as well, um, and yeah, nice greenhouse roof over the top. He was using glass carp from memory. Um, yeah, fine in aquaponics. They are actually, some of them are probably a good idea if you can't maintain perfect water quality, although we should all aim for filtering all the um, solids and ammonia out of the system. Um, they are a little bit, some carp um, varieties are a little bit more hardy and that sort of thing. European carp, um, I know people in Australia where it's legal to have them have used European carp. 
Um, so, yeah, not a problem. Uh, a bit bony to eat, though, especially the goldfish. There was actually a, a um, Chinese, ex Chinese expat um, down the west of Sydney. Um, some of you guys might remember him. He was uh, growing goldfish, and I think he said at one point that was for the Chinese restaurant market because they are considered to be a lucky fish, and there's a celebration that they had it um, every year. So, yeah, that was interesting. Bianca? Jonathan is the chemist and mixes his own, Bianca just said. That would be awesome. I'm not patriarching her if she's asked me to repeat. Um, so, yeah, there you go. So Sam has just said Superior Fresh. Sam will know. So, yeah, still the largest with three acres. There you go. Um, Doug. G'day, Doug. Uh, James, Bianca has said, what would you recommend to use for removing mites? Rage. Bianca just said rage. Rage and flames even? Yeah. Flaming rage. Yeah. Um, I've used soap before and it's worked on some of them and then it stopped working. I've used neem, uh, neem oil, eco neem, uh, sprayed directly on them and that didn't have as much of an effect. Uh, what else have I used? The other one is the pure prop one. That was the last one that I used that worked, but I have a feeling they all work to a degree, but it's rotation. You can't just use one thing over and over again. It also depends on the mite species as well. I've only really had bad spider mites at one point in time on Cancong down in the old system. Uh, the other mites we get um, tend to be a little bit hardier. Uh, the spider mites are a lot easier to get rid of, I think, from memory, uh, but the pure crop one tend to work for me. Um, other than that, um, yeah, just a just a soapy base spray if you if you're looking as long as it's pure soap and not an anti back. Um, Dr Bronner's uh, the peppermint. So I was using the Dr Bronner's peppermint because peppermint is supposed to have um, anti mite um, and anti aphid um, properties as well as white fly and those other soft shells. So it might be something to suss out. Good day, Mr Owen. How's it going, mate? Always great to see you online. Um, so, yeah, I hope that helps with your mites. If anyone else, by the way, um, anyone else has any suggestions to help anyone here, pop them down in that chat section um, and let them out. I'm leaving the chat up so when this is watched over on YouTube after we uh, wrap up, um, it'll be able to help other people down in the chat section. And I know I asked before, but I'm going to ask again, if you folks could sum this up and share it around and even just say good day down in the chat. It helps the um, YouTube algorithm know that there are people actually here. And um, yeah, it just, just helps the, this go out through YouTube land. So I would really appreciate it. Um, but only if you feel like it, you know, I don't want to strain your thumbs or anything. Um, Bianca, red scorpion. So high nitrate required for aquaponics, either that or um, I have a bad light. Um, high nitrates, as long as you're, re you're registering five or above, you're pretty much all laughing with your plants. It means you've got excess in there and your plants aren't sucking it all out as soon as it's converted through from ammonia and nitrite. Um, so yeah, uh, it may be your lights as long as you've got something showing up on your test. Uh, if you want to pop down below what you're getting, mate, um, that would be great. Um, and how many plants as well? Yeah, um, I, I have spoken to a number of people who have said they've had really poor plant growth um, after starting their system. And basically they have cycled, but then uh, the problem is that it's just um, Bianca's pointing. Bothos probably sucking up all the nitrates. Yeah, uh, people who um, plan out their systems after they cycle with a, hello, Jackie, um, with a load of um, um, plants, they tend to get um, deficiencies come up. Say good day, Jack. Uh, they tend to get deficiencies come up just basically because there aren't enough nutrients in the system to support the level of plants. Uh, so yeah, um, they can actually grow la rather large. So that may be one issue and rather fast. So they may be sucking up all your newts. So can I be corny and say thumbs up for Jack? Come on, you know you want to. Um, got on pathetic. Um, yeah, so hope that helps, mate. Um, hi, Robin V. I live off grid and the high desert. I dug a geothermal greenhouse and I'm going to try my hand at aquaponics. I found you sweet. I'm very, very glad they've helped you out. That's awesome. Um, 
Yeah, I've seen a load of geothermal. So are you running um you running um just air pipes through just to help heat the air? Or um have you got it um set up slightly differently? You hopping down, don't lick my mouse. Um sorry, distracted. Oh cool, echo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Always appreciate a super chat. I don't feel you have to, folks, but always very welcome. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, uh, I've seen there's a, um, I don't know how this works. If you've got any questions, okay, let us know and I'll help you out. Um, da, 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 da. Um, yeah, there's been, there was a good um, geothermal greenhouse um, looking at citrus that went a little bit viralish um, last year on YouTube. So um, suss that out. Um, yeah, it's a, a really good way to keep the um, the the inside of your greenhouse nice and warm um, if you're not aware of it already, folks. And I don't see him in the chat here, but I have a guy who bought our guide who I've been chatting with on Facebook when I get around to check Messenger. And he, um, I'm trying to find, I think he's a paramedic or something along those lines here on Facebook paramedic something um and he um he's actually setting one up now he's setting up a massive hoop house i think he told me the other day he got the hoops ready he's already dug the channel for the um the geothermal pipe and hopefully he might share his progress with us at one point in time um i've been interested in chatting to him on via youtube live uh, just to walk through the pro um what he's gone through setting up his geothermal um, greenhouse and um yeah just to help other people out give them ideas And Bianca can't be heard. Um, I'm just trying to find, I just saw Echo again. Thank you very much, mate. You don't have to keep doing that. Um, where are we, where are we? There we go. I use a solar fan and run a four inch, uh, solar power to run a four inch fan, um, 100 mil fan, pump air through a 200 linear feet of tubing, that's six feet underground, it keeps from greenhouse around about 15 degrees Fahrenheit, warmer or cooler, depending on the time of year. Yeah, just using that geothermal mass, absolutely fantastic way to heat. I've seen um, when we're watching Grand Design, I think it was Grand Designs in England, there was a bit of a fad there, um, probably was that, about 10 years ago. They were running everything with geothermal um, with fans through to heat and cool the house through um, winter. And as Bianca just said, look how much they have to pay for electricity now. Shall we thank Putin? No, we won't. Um, the KH in my system to tell the truth, Samuel, I haven't measured the KH in ages. I don't really think it um, comes into play a great deal with ours. Um, I'm more just focused on the pH and buffering that up. I replace on average roundabout at the moment. Um, now the Warrigal Greens are out of the system, probably um, won't be this much, but I've been replacing around about three to 400 litres. So 50 to 75 gallons to, of uh, water every week. We have fairly hard water coming into the system. So it's not really um, something that I've had to worry about. I probably should um, do a few more um, tests just to measure where it's sitting at. Um, that's actually another video I've been meaning to do. I did do a, a rough one uh, looking at pH and alkalinity years ago with the other system. Um, but yeah, when not something I've looked at recently on a video. Sorry, Samuel. Um, oh, you would do because the frost line is pretty low, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bianca just said they do, um, just replying about uh, Samuel, or oh, Red Scorpion, sorry. Um, so you've got to dig deep for your geothermal um, over in Iowa. Um, thanks again, Echo. Uh, I learned something interesting from Potent Ponics. There are certain biological septic treatments that you can use to enrich an aquaponics and hydroponics system. Have you ever heard of this? Um, septic is, um, I, I have heard of people doing um, worm compost, even chicken compost teas and that sort of thing, uh, but not human septic if that's what you're after. Um, I have, I, I do know that there's a load of different biology that um, Steve's been playing around with and um, Chris as well. Chris Trump apparently um, was into aquaponics to begin with and then went to the microbiological side and fungal and all that sort of thing, the um, uh, um, KNF and um, 
JNF and that sort of thing, uh, lacto ferments and the fungal treatments. Um, so IMOs, um, but yeah, I'm not septic treatments. For me, I'm thinking septic tank um, because that's what we used to have on the farm. Um, so. Uh, frugal grid, solar power. Yep, Owens. So that's a soluble seaweed. Do you rate that stuff as good? Ah, the soluble seaweed. Yeah, I also sell a few things to help pay the bills, folks. I do a soluble seaweed um, flake. It's a Norwegian seaweed. And yeah, I think it works just as good as sea salt at keeping the different uh, bits and pieces in there. In fact, stuff it. I'm going to spruik my shop. This is my live stream. I can do what I want. Um, <laughs> dance. I'm not going to dance. <laughs> Oh, interpretive dance. Hang on, folks. I might go a little bit silent here just while I try and find my shop. Um, yeah, uh, the soluble seaweed does, yeah, it, it does work okay. Um, this is the main page for our shop. Actually got $5 off shipping on the aquaponics at the moment. Oh, aquaponics. On the nutcrackers worldwide at the moment. Um, if I can just find the live stream again. Oh, no, where am I, Bianca? This is embarrassing. I've lost us. Too many tabs. There we go. Here we go. Visit my shop. I sell the uh, nutcrackers worldwide and the other bits and pieces, mainly in Australia. Uh, the soluble seaweed works really good. Um, I have had issues adding too much of it and uh, just turning the water really cloudy. I really like to see my fish, um, but it generally clears up in a couple of days. Um, I think that was why I wasn't having some of the micro element on people on camera, micro element um, deficiencies that I was having, which Steve actually helped me point out um, that I was probably having a molybdenum and um, what was it? Um, um, molybdenum or manganese deficiency a while back and not a nitrate one. And I actually, um, I wasn't having those deficiencies because I was using the, um, the kelp. And then it yeah, worked out it was that. And I started using the kelp again after I used some of the true aquaponics additives. Um, yeah, so I, I am adding about a tablespoon every three to four weeks, not as into every 300 litres or what's that? Um, just a, you know, one, uh, an IBC grow bed. So I add two tablespoons into the larger 600 litre grow bed. Um, yeah, so I don't add in as much as other people recommend. I think that's all you really need. Um, I have had one guy who purchased it who um, actually added in the recommended dosage as if you were watering a garden. Please don't do that. This is aquaponics. He actually turned his water black and he couldn't see any fish. He didn't lose any, thank God. Um, but yeah, don't, don't follow the instructions on the packet. I've got instructions on the website. Please follow them. It's not my product. I'm not importing it. I'm on selling it um, for the plant doctor folks here in Australia. Uh, but yeah, I haven't had any issues with it. Bianca is pointing at the screen. Um, who was that? Sorry. Uh, Wizard Duck, how's it going, Daza? Um, yeah, um, I have I have heard of people. I don't know if it was a sea salt branding issue, or maybe I've heard people say they used old sea salt and done that. I don't think that was Daza's um, issue, but they've used old um, sea salt that was been left around for a couple of years, and they put that in their system. They had fish death, so I don't know whether that's breaking down and um, releasing elements that aren't very friendly to the system or not. But yeah, um, always test like anything, I suppose, when you're, even when you're spraying for pests. Um, always test a little bit first and see how you go. But that um, powdered kelp, I've used that product sold under different names um, for years and it works fine. So, yeah. EMT22. Thank you, EMT22. I knew it was something along first responders. EMT22 is doing the geothermal, uh, shared some pictures with me online. And sorry, mate, if you just joined us, I haven't um, caught up with Messenger over the last couple of days. I have seen you pop a few times. Um, but yeah, he's doing a geothermal greenhouse and you never know, one day we might be able to catch up and either do a live or do a bit of a video just showing you what he's done. Because I, I do find them fascinating, not something we really need here to warm things, but definitely something we need here to keep things cool. Um, big par. I'm in Texas. You have helped me greatly. Oh, glad I could help big par. Uh, how's Texas? Getting chilly where you are? Um, I know a few people up north and they say it gets rather cold during winter there. Bianca Gray. Tilapia is actually illegal. Where are we? Um, 
Hi, Kay. Have you ever tried uh, crossbreed different tilapias? Yeah, no, we can't here um, in Australia. Big fine, anywhere up to like 250,000, I think. Um, scroll up, did you say? Um, Mon uh, Montgomery's guy. G'day, how's it going? Um, all is well with us. A long time, no chat. Very definitely so. Um, awesome. Good to see people come along who haven't chatted to for a while. Um, yeah, the tilapias, yeah, huge fine, even if you catch them in the waterways and um, technically you're supposed to destroy them straight away above the waterline, put them in bins and all sorts of stuff because they're mouth breeders. Um, so, yeah, we don't have them here in Australia. I don't know really any channels to recommend you on YouTube or places. I think the, it's the Arizona... Oh, there's a... Um, there's an Arizona fisheries unit through one of the universities there in Extension. <laughs> They've got a load of information on um, fish breeding and that sort of thing, even raising alligators. Um, so yeah, check that out. I'm fairly sure it's an Arizona university. If you look up Arizona Aquaponics University, something may come up. Sorry, just ASU, something like that. Um, yeah, no, you're not even allowed to eat tilapia here technically. Uh, there was a Vietnamese family recently who were caught down at Colleges Crossing, a local place. I've heard word of mouth. Um, they had a whole load they were going to take home. I mean, it's in the waterways here, and they were going to cook them up, and apparently um, they were going to get fined, and they had to destroy the fish. Crazy. They're taking it away. They're going to cook it. They're going to eat it. Uh, government's intelligent. Um, yeah, so... I do know that there was talk of crossing, sorry for waffling on about this. I think it was the Blue Nile and Mozambique, and I think you get sterile male offspring. And there was talk about um, doing that commercially. I think I could be wrong with that hybrid, um, but there was talk about doing that here in um, allowing it in Queensland commercially, as long as the proper biosecurity was in place. Um, so they didn't escape but being all males. I think they're also sterile males. Um, they couldn't do any damage to the environment other than um, knocking off uh, the local species food as they were alive and perished. Um, I think I'm catching up. Yeah. I am catching up. Uh, Bianca Gray again. Jeez, I wish she'd stop spamming. Um, you love me. What's the next fish you plan? Monster troll. How's it going? Um, next uh, fish you plan? Jade's again. Um, I don't know because I'm going. I'm planning. I've been talking to Owen and Dazza about doing the system a little bit differently next time around. Um, thinking about doing um, a sand bed filter as my primary, bi primary biological and solids filtration. So for that, I was thinking about a slightly slower growing fish. I thought I might try the eel tail catfish, Tandanus Tandanus. They take a little bit longer, uh, but they're really groovy little fellas to watch. Um, or the other option was to try and push it and um, have another biofilter on, uh, on standby and um, do the jades and just see how well it does. The jades would probably be better actually, just because they're gonna produce more waste, uh, which means, um, yeah, put, uh, push the sand to its limits. Basically what, um, um, if you've seen Owen's video, if you haven't, check it out, I'll pop a link here. Um, if you do um, a sand filter, and just have, like Owen's on Owen's channel, that's why I said that. Um, if you just do a sand bed and then just have all the water directly from the radial flow settler, um, go to there. I would run it through radial flow settler because I'd add a few other bells and whistles. Wouldn't be a straight IAVS. Um, sorry, purist. I would muck around with doing something else first until I felt confident. And then I'd do a straight IAVS just because the stocking load is rather high. I know there's a couple of folks in Queensland that have done IAVS with Jade Perch, but I haven't really seen their system in operation. So. Um, I'm going to do a hybrid one. Um, so I will share Owen's video link to you folks if you haven't seen it already in the chat down below. Um, just so you're looking through the channel. Um, yeah, so sand filter, and then I'd actually have it bells and whistles bypass through the clean water and the radial flow settler, either going to a deep water culture bed or into a media bed. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, how I decide to step that up. Um, yeah, just on that, um, Bianca and I have made a decision. We've got kind of faffed about about waiting until we buy a property to set up the gardens and all that. Um, just because resale value, this place would sell better with just turf on the ground because that's what people like. Um, but we are going to set up a little area just for aquaponics and have at least one system running and some veggie patch and some chickens for Rob if you're watching and Paul 
and Dave and all those people to hassle me. And Bianca just said, ducks, we were going to go ducks, or to go farm. Thank you, Hamish and Nicole. When the time happens, if the fox don't get them all, um, some Muscovy's ducks. And thanks to um, Survival Podcast, Mr. Jack Spirico, for pointing us in that direction. Um, we're talking about doing some ducks as well. We just have a poultry limit here we've got to keep an eye on. So uh, quail, we can have thousands apparently, uh, but other poultry, we've got to be careful. Yeah, it's going to have to be one or the other ducks or... I suppose ducks won't scratch around gardens as much, will they? But they will go and, hello, butcher bird. They will go foul the fish tanks if they land in them. But anyway, yeah, we are looking at developing and, um, yeah, pulling our fingers out. And so there will be more garden content as well, uh, just general update garden stuff coming to the channel. Actually think about doing a poll and seeing if um, you guys want to design the backyard and where stuff goes. I know that's probably dangerous. Um, but, yeah, it was something it might be interesting. Yeah, it might be interesting. Uh, see what you guys come up with, where stuff goes position-wise and that. Um, <clears throat> Red Scorpion has asked if we can order frozen tilapia. Apparently, yeah, we can buy it in the shops. Yeah, in Queensland, we can. There you go. In New South Wales, it's still illegal to possess or move. The anchor's just going to feed a butcher bird. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Um, Echo making some aquaponic garden barrels and sending them to places that could use portable. Oh, cool, nice one, Echo. Um, yeah, the little barrel systems they're they're really great at growing a couple of greens and that, especially if you get like a 200 litre barrel or 50 gallon barrel and use that as your fish tank. You can actually grow quite a bit of food with um, some ornamentals in there. And, um, pardon me, just the square meter ish or three, um, nine square feet-ish of grow space on top. Um, have people to communicate with about something we have in common. Yeah, definitely hit me up in any um, questions on any videos that you'd like some help with, looking from camera again, mate, and yeah, be able to help you out. Um, I have sort of stopped taking um, questions from people on uh, random ones on email. I just can't keep up with it, folks. Uh, best way, if you do want to get in contact with me is through the guide if you've purchased it. Um, because I check that one a couple of times a day because I do get some questions coming through the guide. All you have to do is click the little advice button if you have bought the guide and um, that will take you through there. Um, I'm going to spruce that as well. Um, or um, under a video, I haven't caught up with a lot of um, comments on videos recently, but I am going to on Monday, I'm going to reply to comments and pop up on this one and catch up on a month or two's worth of comments. Uh, just generally on YouTube. So leave your comments under those videos and I will get to them eventually. Uh, but the best way is uh, the guide or to become a supporter and ask one of the supporter platforms. Um, like I said before earlier on, if you're just new, um, just flat out doing, I'm sort of pulled everywhere at the moment. So that's why there hasn't been a lot of content and I haven't been getting back to a lot of questions on videos. Um, so it's just one of those things. Sorry, folks. Um, I need to still pay the bills and help family out and some things take priority. And now where's the video one? There you go. If you're interested in the guide, um, what you see is not what you get. There is content being added to it all the time. Um, so, yeah, um, the guide is an ever-growing thing and there may be a community coming attached to the guide very soon. I hate spruiking, but apparently I have to. Um, where are we from? Uh, we are in southeast Queensland, Australia, Australia in a medium size for Australia city. Um, actually a small city west of the capital of Queensland called Ipswich and yeah we're in suburbia on a fairly small block um, houses all around us and we're about a hundred meters um, from the local um, river which is the Bruma River what are you hitting me on the knee for oh, you? oh okay I thought you wanted my attention drastically um, so yeah we're a subtropical climate uh, we are looking to get larger area, uh, larger land though. We're looking at 40 acres minimum, uh, move out to somewhere where we can have a couple of cows and actually build a homestead and a few small crops and that sort of thing. Uh, diversify, have aquaculture, aquaponics, uh, beef, cattle and ducks and yes, pigs because Bianca wants pigs to cut off. So there we go. Um, that's what we're looking at doing. But for the moment, yeah, just a small little backyard farm. G'day, Indiana. A couple from Indiana, Idaho, Indiana. Big Pa had a question. 
Um, can you truly do bad with just sand, small grains? Yeah, no, sand, um, IAVS is a proven system. It does grow food. Um, there are there are some naysayers around who um, are really picky about how good it is. Um, the research was done ages ago. Um, so it's it's pretty much all a proven way to grow. Loads of folks in the Middle East are growing using that media. Uh, they're growing with catfish and tilapia. And um, I think one of the guys' name is Rabbi. Um, if you jump on over to the face palm group they have, um, they've got a couple of face palm groups. Um, just look up IAVS systems. And yeah, that, some of those guys are selling a lot of produce over in their area of the world. Um, there are some guys in Australia who have set up a rather large system. Um, I think, is, is it Curtis? He sent me the photos. He's another proponent. He does little bathtub systems. Um, he's uh, fairly uh, prolific in his posts and commentary over there. So, yeah, well worth um, so, um, sussing it out. Um, Gary Donaldson is the chap who runs those groups um, along with the inventor. Um, so, yeah, definitely um, pop on over and see what it's all about. And yeah, a lot of people um, showing their success stories over there. Um, the same goes with soil though. I mean, Steve Dredd from Potent Ponics, he's growing loads of stuff medicinally. And there's also guys who use it to grow um, vegetative growth, which is what I've done here just with the potatoes and ginger and that sort of thing, had great success with them. Um, so they're all, you're not just locked into inert medias like clay and rock and um, lava rock and things like that, expanded um, shale. Um, there are, you can use um, traditional gardening methods and integrate them in with aquaponics as well. So yeah, but sand, um, I like the idea of it because it acts as both a solids and a biofilter. Um, so that's, yeah, that's, you don't have to remove the solids and then process them in a separate mineralization tank and then add the nutrients back in. So that's why I'm liking the idea. Um, JMK, second big pass question. I hope that's the one and I hope I answered it okay. Um, North Indiana, awesome. Cheers, Echo. Uh, nice one, EMT. John Smith, hello from Trout Capital of the World, a White River in Arkansas, Arkansas USA. Um, this message has been held for review. This, sorry, folks, I'm about to confront you with lax, disgusting, disgusting. This, I've got to show it. It's just, it has to be shown. The world, you've been outed, mate. Sorry, I got a really shitty sense of humor, I know. Oh, I swore on the last one. Um, uh, Vincennes, I hope I pronounced that right. I'm going to look that up. I like going back through and seeing where everyone's from. Uh, Notre Dame, there we go. G'day from Liverpool. How's it going, Liverpool? Liverpool, Australia or England? It's England, it's pretty early or late over there. When do we plan on moving? Um, well, we need to work some financial wizardry first and um, that's um, trying to work out how we can diversify um, superannuations and that sort of things and, and see whether we keep this house or sell up this house or um, how we go. Um, we're gonna be one of those, maybe one of those capitalist pig land lords, we don't know yet. Um, we just gotta work out, we'll only be renting to family so I won't be ripping anyone else off, no one that doesn't deserve it anyway. Um, I love my girls. Um, the fun and dad. Yeah, it just depends on what goes on um, with different bits and pieces, um, family-wise as well. And it's, it's part of me having to knuckle down and try and um, concentrate on earning more dosh as well because we can't just do it on the anchors and easily government income. Um, so quick, yeah, but as quick as we can. Um, so yeah, if we have to sell up and move, then that yeah, I'd say. We sort of said June next year, we'd start to see, if we're looking now, if a bargain comes up that we can take advantage of, we'd take it. Um, but seriously, June next year, Bianca's put a bit of a, um, a foot down and said, obey me. And the house prices are ridiculous at the moment. Um, so yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what happens there. I know it's bad that the interest rates going up and it may force some people who did a tree change to escape Victoria. And, um, and Chairman Dan, um, they've moved to Queensland and bought places up here. And I hate to say it, but with interest rates going up around the world, um, a few of them may not be able to afford it. So it might be able to help someone out and um, not let the banks rip them off. 
and uh, maybe go share farming with them or something along those lines, not necessarily take their properties. So we're, we're up for all sorts of um, options, share farming. My parents did that with family. We uh, knew people on the farm who share farms, different families who weren't related and it worked really well. Actually, they were the first people I knew who did permaculture before I knew permaculture existed. Massive paddocks full of swales um, to capture the runoff, uh, to um, help revegetation of their sheep paddocks. Um, so yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, uh, it all depends. Um, options are always up there. We're not going to move to the permaculture commune, um, something like the popular ones um, north of Queensland uh, in um, Crystal Waters and places like that. I just don't think they're viable. I mean, it works for those people who live there, um, but we're, we're thinking bigger. We're thinking beef. Um, Bianca and I have changed to a mainly, carniv mainly carnivore, not total carnivore diet. And even though we've slipped recently with a few things that have gone on, um, we've found it greatly improved our um, arthritis and bits and pieces like that, uh, which could also anecdotally just be cutting out crappy seed oils and carbohydrates and sugars and things like that. Um, but yeah, so we want to move to farms where we can grow our own meat, basically. Jeez, do you guys hate me rattling on? <laughs> Great dive. I always wanted to ask, can you use clams, mussels, shrimps in the solid selling tank? Yeah, you can. Um, they will uh, produce waste. They will filter certain things out. I haven't seen anyone be able to grow enough to make it a food source. And you can also have problems with the acid um, affecting their shell development, depending on how low you run your system. Um, but yeah, there's also too, there are some issues. I've, I've, I've seen varying responses, especially on face palm, but you get all sorts of experts on face palm um, claiming that even though the freshwater mussels can, their life cycle, they, do, they release their eggs, those eggs in some species will actually have to lodge and have a phase on the gills of the fish before they detach and then form um, clams. I've seen people say that's not an issue at all. They've been in aquaculture for decades and they've never known an issue. I've seen other people present papers um, to the conversation and say, yes, it can have a, an effect on young fish in particular. So it's one of those things, do your, do your due diligence, have a look around, um, don't trust face palm. Um, and yeah, just see what you can come up with um, as to whether it's worth doing and if it will affect the fish that you're running in the system. So yeah, there's a few different angles there, your pH and also will it affect, uh, affect other organisms within the system. Yes, Bianca, let's keep going. Where am I up to? G'day, Matthew, how's it going, mate? Um, big pa, wizard. Yeah, I've lost a grow bed under deep uh, root zone tomatoes. Um, was what was that? Just over too much moisture there, does it? You reckon a bit of root rot? Um, yeah, did mate. I hope, yeah, answer the question. Hope that's one. Oh, hell, uh, no, you only have blah blah blah. Sorry, big pa. Oh, hell, no, you have a great sense of humor. Oh, okay, not a problem. Cheers, mate. Um, uh, you got it. Half come here and can't. Sorry, I'm slightly dyslexic. You got it in half. People come here and can't. Sister city in France. Little history, Rob. Oh, okay, cool. Not a problem. Yeah, I'm rolling beard here. Sorry, I'm not trying to get money. I'm sorry, it's distracting. Um, uh, can we address the beard? How long is it and why? I have a beard, but not as expressive as you might be jealous. Um, I've actually had people in Saudi Arabia years ago want to buy my beard hair. I just I don't know if you guys watch Black Hook. There's an episode there where Manny was, um, Manny was a beard, beard model for weird people with kinks. Anyway, um, the beard. The beard is ever growing, it's very unkept, a lot of split hens, that's why it never gets any longer than this. And it's because I'm lazy, in all honesty, I'm lazy. That's why it's all long on the side bits. Um, I was getting a lot of um, skin reactions and scaly skin and that sort of thing when I was shaving all the time because I'm a blade shaver. And um, I just found growing the beard just helped. It, it stopped it, um, started getting it back again between my eyes the other week and realized I need to get back on the beef. Um, but yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just long and it's easy. I'm not trying to look like Costa, uh, the gardening guru here in Australia on ABC TV. It's just nice and long. And I sort of like the uh, fact that it's um, 
men were distinguished here in Australia once upon a time when they grew a long beard, a nice long over the top one like this. Uh, a lot of distinguished photos from my family's past, of distinct photos of distinguished gentlemen from my family's past on my, um, on my father's, actually, yeah, on my father's side, Sims, uh, with their nice big long beards. So I thought, you know, why not? Um, and Bush Rangers, you know, a bit of a Ned Kelly, such is life. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, just lazy. It really boils down to it. I uh, really should look after and get it trimmed. Uh, I generally once, yeah, once, once or twice a year, um, we take a fist off the end, so about that much off the ends, just to get rid of the dead ends and that. I have thought about going to a barber and getting it all manicured and whatnot, uh, but then I'd have to put a hair bun in, so oh, I'm not going to. Yeah. Um, Shaved twice in your life. Impressive, big part. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'll ever be um, shaving again. Sorry, back to the fish. Um, could you use animal waste in an animal ponic system? Yeah, duck ponics. Look up quack ponics, duck ponics. Uh, just got to keep an eye on the time because we've got family commitments. Oh, no, you said we could go a bit later. So we, we might run a little bit longer, folks, but we'll have to wind it up soon. Um, animal waste. Yeah, worm ponics. Um, I've seen people, bioponics is another one. Uh, where people will just do their um, compost. So if you composted horse manure or cow manure or um, any other manure, chicken people compost chicken manure in high intensity heat compost piles, then make a compost tea and then you can run that in your system. Um, duck ponics, people tend to grow with duck ponics because they don't tend to have the salmonella issues as I understand it with chickens to have. Um, turtle ponics, people have talked to me about turtle ponics, but I haven't tried it, I haven't looked into it, but someone I trust has told me there is a salmonella issue with turtles as well. So that is something to be aware of. Um, and yeah, I have seen the I have seen the systems where over in China, the permaculture magazines, and I think it's actually in the uh, permaculture Bible where they run a stack system. Um, where they've got um, pigs or poultry ducks over a graded floor that falls into a dam with tilapia or other uh, detritus eating fish, and then they produce waste and produce fish. I don't know if I'd do that in an aquaponic setting, though, mainly because some of that splashed water will end up on your produce, and there's a whole world of um, uh, red tape to get through if you wanted to do it commercially. I, I can't ever see it being done commercially. And even, you know, your own... Um, for your own health. Uh, but then again, uh, pea ponics, I've grown with pea ponics. We had a barrel system. There's videos on the channel if you want to suss it out. Um, I haven't really outright said it's grown with pea ponics, but um, pond and then water sent through an aquaponics field. Yeah, if it, if, as long as it was um, broken down, Antonio, sorry, I should be looking myself. As long as it's broken down well, um, I can't see and composted first. Um, I can't see it being an issue, but cows can carry diseases that we can get. Uh, not so much, I don't think the fish can pass them on to us, but if they're in the water in the system, the, the issue is they um, they can affect the, um, they can affect the um, splash on the plants and then we consume it and affect us that way. Uh, but the pea ponics, I'm um, just touching back on that quickly, is something I will be doing again very soon. I found a uh, numerous amount of literage of my own rob water downstairs and I've got to use it up. I'm not going to waste it. Uh, so I thought I might do a pea ponics um, system and bring that on just a circulating one because uh, other than having fairly high amounts of sodium, which can affect your plants, it, um, yeah, it's pretty much all, almost a complete plant food. Um, so yeah, it's always also something viable. I've seen people on face palm say that they pee in their, their tank every month um, just to get some extra nutrients in there. So, you know, I'm not going to condone or say that's a bad thing or um, say that you should do it, but that's what some people do. And as Bianca said, it's good to activate the compost. We um, typically use roadkill if we can find it, the odd possum out the front or um, save urine um, to activate compost that's very carbon-based if I don't have a lot of nitrogen. So there you go. Um, wizard aquaponics, no, just growing mad. Uh, just, just a bundle of growth. Um, one to two meters of green growth. So just to see a green. Um, Taryn, was that answering my question? 
Oh, okay. Darren, up further. Da, da, da. Sand, rock, charcoal filter, bucket. What work are they? Um, I haven't run one myself, but the, the sand and rock filters, uh, the gravel filters, um, there is one on my channel. Um, we just talk about it briefly. We don't go into um, we don't go into the actual showing how it's made. I just do a bit of a cutaway um, um, schematic of how or makeup mock up of how it's made. Which tab is it, Bianca? And I will put it down here now. It's um, from looking at Terry's system. So if you want to um, suck, uh, suss that out, um, Terry and Earthling, um, I might give you a bit of an idea. Mrs. Ducky, hope they're um, hope they're taking pharmaceuticals. Yeah, um, if you are taking pharmaceuticals, it's a good idea not to collect your urine. Um, obviously, if you've got any infections down there as well, also not a good idea. And if you are going to feed the produce to people, please be ethical and let them know. No one in our family cared. Oh, I forgot to tell them though. Um, but um, <laughs> yeah, it is ethical to let them know that, that that's what you're doing. Um, I think it is anyway. Yeah, um, yeah, estrogen, Bianca just said, uh, if you're on the pill, probably not a good idea. Extra es estrogen, it's already too much of that out in the um, environment with uh, plastic pollution. Um, so yeah, probably not a good idea. Um, and I was told by someone, when you collect it, if you're on a lot of B vitamin supplements, yeah, fine to collect, but yeah, the end product is rather whiffy. <clears throat> so there we go. Uh, Samuel, people say tilapia tastes bad, and that's exactly why. Sorry, I'm not. I uh, don't understand what that's in response to. But I have heard people say that um, uh, tilapia does taste bad, and it's not the best flavoured fish. Then I've heard other people say it's fantastic. So um, I'm not a huge fish eater, so they all taste like fish to me. Like Vegemite, Bianca just said. People love it or hate it. I love it, but I don't eat it anymore. But yeah, fair enough thing, 12 pays on the phone. Oh, okay, not a problem. They know what they're talking about. Um, so that's it. Um, yeah, I think I will wrap it up. If you want to give it one last thumbs up, if you're still there. And um, anyway, you can share the link around anyway, if you feel like it, because other people will be able to watch this once it goes live on YouTube. There may be a bit of a funny start to it because I paused it in the back end of YouTube before we started. So there might be some chat from Bianca and I just talking or just staring or just me combing my beard to get ready. Maybe some slightly inappropriate body function conversation. Chat with Bianca's brother on the phone. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Anyway, thank you very much, folks. Uh, don't forget to, yeah, thumbs it up and share it around if you feel like it. And if you want to check out um, our guide, there's links in the chat there and there's one down below in the description. And the shop as well, $5 off the Nutcrackers. If you buy one, you can buy a Nutcracker and buy anything else in the shop and get sent out and get $5 off. Uh, what else? The guide, if you're interested in the guides. Uh, there's the membership platforms. Um, I haven't been posting there a lot lately. I did post last night to them. So if you want to suss that out, if you're a member, just showing a bit of a sneak peek at the Warrigal Greens harvest and what the logs I produced from it. And the beautiful Bianca going to say goodbye. Bye. Bye. And we'll call it quits. Thank you very much, folks. And I will catch you later. Now I've got to work out where I've got to turn this off. Hang on. Here we go. There we go. Cheers, folks. Have a tough one.